Hey everybody, listen, in this video, I'm gonna lead you in the process of identifying, documenting, and, and achieving goals. This is a process that we need to understand. How do we do this? How do we identify goals? How do we make sure they're documented? And then more importantly, gang, how do we actually achieve the goals that we've set? So I'm gonna look with you at five key areas that are an absolute must when it comes to this whole concept of identifying goals. These five things are gonna absolutely um, help you in that endeavor, okay? So we're gonna learn what a goal is. Basically, what, what is a goal? And what are some do's and some don'ts when it comes to setting goals? We're definitely gonna take some time and look at that. Um, we're gonna learn, and you're gonna learn, that there are actually several types of goals, okay? And why is it important that we have several different types of goals that we're referring to and aiming at, okay? We're gonna talk about that. Um, listen, what good is it to have a goal if we don't ever bother to keep track of whether we're achieving them or not, okay? So we're going to talk about ways to track your goals, right? Including the metrics that are so important in the process of tracking them. In fact, there's nine different metrics that we're going to look at, okay, that I'm going to share with you when it comes to tracking the basic goals in your business. And then guess what? We're going to finish up by looking at the foundation of your business because the goals are simply one part or one element in the process of building the foundation of your business. So we're gonna talk, uh, take a look at that and talk about that, all right? Now listen, I just wanna be very clear with you. This video is being exclusively created for Real Estate Bees, all right? So you are not gonna find this content anywhere else on any of my other platforms, all right? So you need to make sure you pay attention and give a thumbs up to Real Estate Bees for including this there for you to watch, okay? Now listen, before we kick this off, I wanna just give you a little bit of a brief background on who I am and why I'm sharing this with you today. All right, so my name is James Hotel. I have been a coach, a trainer, a speaker for 25 years, all right? And I have literally had the privilege of working with thousands of individual agents, team leaders, broker owners, managers, okay? And so this conversation uh, of, of talking through goals and how to build a plan, how to build a roadmap, I mean, this is an absolutely critical conversation that I have with and have had with lots and lots of people just like you. All right, so I'm looking forward to this conversation. If you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into the content, all right? So first of all, let's let's go back to the first thing I suggested, which is understanding what a goal is, okay? So what is it, what do we mean when we talk about setting a goal? Well, first of all, let's, let's get real simple, okay? A goal is simply a target. A goal is, is a desired outcome, okay? So if you're taking notes, write that down. A goal is a desired outcome that you have in your business, and you might have and probably should have personal goals as well, which we're not really getting into as much today. But I'm telling you right now, the goals that you set for yourself are actually even more important than the goals that you set for your business. Okay, Your business is really just a, it's a, it's a composite of your life. It's a stepping stone. It's a, it's a means to create and design the kind of life that you want to have. Okay, but that's really what a goal is. In fact, if we look at this word success, right, we've heard about the importance of achieving success and we all want to feel like we're moving in the direction of achieving success. One of the best definitions that I've heard in my entire life came from a gentleman that you've probably heard of before. His name is Earl Nightingale. And Earl Nightingale once said that success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. Okay, the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. So the point is, is that this is not something that we achieve overnight. This is something that we are moving toward. And once we reach a certain level, gang, it's important that we figure out what the next goal is. What is the next level? Okay, what does that next level look like when it comes to your specific business, the size of your organization, and again, ultimately your life? Okay, so um, I guess one of the things that, that I felt like was important to share uh, and, and it's kind of built into this whole outline is that if you aim at nothing, you're guaranteed to hit it. Okay. If you aim at nothing, you're guaranteed to hit it. So what that means is, again, this isn't just stumbling through life. This isn't just, you know, wing in your business. This is systematically designing a process that is, that is intended to bring you to an outcome that you desire. All right. And that's really what we're looking at here today. So let's talk about some do's and some don'ts when it comes to this idea of, of um, setting goals. And I think it's important to note as well that for a lot of people, not just agents, but for a lot of people, the problem isn't that they don't achieve their goals, 
Okay. The problem is they never set any goals in the first place. And I think a lot of that is because they don't, again, they don't understand what it means to set meaningful goals. So here are some things that you want to do. Okay. So this is on the do side of goal setting. These are things you want to do. Number one, I, I wrote down a number of things. You're going to see me referring to my notes every once in a while. But the first thing that you want to do is actually take the time to think it through. Okay. So my point is, don't just rush into a goal. Don't just write down the first simple idea that comes to your mind and say, hey, that's my goal. You need to think it through. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your future to really think about what is a meaningful outcome for me. Okay? So think it through. Put some time. Put some effort. Invest into the process of developing the goals for yourself. Okay? Second thing I wrote down is clearly define them. Okay? Clarity is king, gang. You need to have clarity and to be certain, to be specific about your goals, all right? The worst thing you can have is a generic, non-specific goal. And I'll give you an example. A lot of times I'll, I'll talk to agents and I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, hey, so what are some of your goals? Well, I just want to do more business. Okay, well, more business. What does that look like? How will you ever know if you've done more business, right? Or I just want to get better at my skills. Or I want to, get, I want to learn to take more listings. Well, how many is more? And what is the process going to look like for you to actually do that? Okay, so when you define a goal, when you set your goals, be as specific and be as clear as possible about what exactly it is that you're trying to create in terms of an outcome. All right. The third thing that's a must when it comes to setting goals is it's okay to think big. Like, don't limit yourself. Now, we're going to talk in just a minute about a type of a goal. One of the types of the goals we're going to look at are what we call realistic goals. Okay, and I'm a big fan of thinking big. Okay. So when you are setting goals for yourself, don't limit, okay? Don't limit what you feel like you can accomplish. But at the same time, as we're going to talk about, you got to balance that with what's realistic, okay? So set goals that are exciting. Set goals that are meaningful. And don't be afraid to go a little bit beyond what you might believe that you think you're capable of achieving, okay? And then the last thing under the do that you want to make sure you do is that you basically, you, you have to think about what it's really going to take to achieve the goal. All right. And I see this a lot with agents, especially a lot of the younger agents, a lot of, you know, really, um, you know, passionate younger people that they get into the business and, and they, they set these, these exciting goals, big goals. But the problem is they haven't really stopped to look at or to kind of research what it's going to take to actually reach that. And once they get going, once they get into motion, once they start realizing what it's actually going to require to reach their goal, sometimes they start to back away. Sometimes they start to realize, you know what, maybe I don't really want that as badly as I think I did or thought I did. Okay, so understand what it's going to take. But then here's the deal, gang. Be willing to commit. Be willing to commit to doing what it takes to reach your goals. Okay, remember that definition. Success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. So maybe here's a quick question for you. What is the most, most worthwhile goal that you're aiming for right now, right? Do you have any? Do you have any specific worthwhile goals? And are you progressing? Okay, and this is going to lead into this idea of tracking and paying attention to the metrics, right, that are going to be used to measure whether we're achieving our goals or not. Okay, so those are some things you want to do. Let's talk about what you shouldn't do when it comes to goal setting. There's some don'ts, and these are just as important to be aware of, okay? So the first thing is, um, is don't set your goal based on what you think someone else expects from you. Okay, don't set your goals based on what you feel people's expectations are or other people's definitions of what a goal should be for you. This is your goal. This is about you. You own this. This is about your future. Okay, so don't set your goals up to just impress somebody, to make it seem like, wow, man, what did you hear with that guy or that girl's planning to achieve? These are specific to you, okay? Um, don't be afraid to think big, okay? And, and don't be afraid. We kind of talked about that in the do's. So don't be afraid. Uh, you know, don't set your goals in a way that are gonna, that is gonna limit you from what you're actually capable of, okay? A lot of times agents will say to me, man, do you think this is realistic? And I'll say, well, I guess that depends on you, right? I mean, is this something you really want? And is it something you're really willing to commit to? Because if it is, guess what? It can be realistic. All right. So what else shouldn't we not do? Um, we shouldn't be afraid to adjust our goals. Okay. 
don't be afraid to go back and, and adjust as necessary or as needed. Because sometimes we get going down a path, gang, and what you realize is that your goal and your plan gets messed up. And there's a concept that I refer to as correct and continue. So one of the things you're going to realize in the process of moving forward down that success path is that you got to readjust. you got to be okay with maybe a, a realigning based on a shift in the market, maybe based on something else that's going on in your life. Okay, So don't just set your goal on January 1st and say, that's it. I'm never modifying that. Nothing's going to change. That's not the way to approach goal setting. Okay, um, And I, I think... I guess this is also worth saying when it comes to do's and don'ts. Uh, don't be afraid to share your goal. Don't keep it to yourself. Put it out there. Let everybody know what you're aiming for and what you're trying to achieve because guess what? That creates accountability. And accountability is one of the most important concepts in helping ensure that you actually reach your goal. Okay? So put it out there. Share it. Be honest with people. All right? The last thing I would say not to do is don't give up too soon. Okay, so again, if you're taking notes under the don'ts, don't give up too soon. Don't be so short-sighted. Don't be so impatient that you don't allow the process of what you're doing to actually bring you to your goal. Okay, so don't, don't stop. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Keep driving toward the goal that you have. Okay, so I had mentioned in my initial intro there that there are several different types of goals. Okay, and so... There's, again, for you note takers, realistic goals, there's short-term goals, there's long-term goals, and then there are goals that are larger size for, for an organizational level. So maybe some of you are broker owners, maybe some of you are team leaders, and you're working on building an organization, and there are certain types of goals that are going to apply even more specifically to you, okay? So when we talk about realistic goals, uh, again, we have to measure that, and we have to balance that between... A, what is possible, and B, what is so big that it's really not likely and it's just going to discourage us. And that's a fine line. All right, let's be honest. That's a fine line that we need to learn to walk. But here are some general guidelines, okay? So let's say, and these are based on just purely production. So I'm just talking only about production goals right now, okay? Meaning number of units that you want to close. So let's say, for example, that you're an agent who's, who's done but somewhere between zero deals and maybe 10 deals in the last 12 months. It is totally fine, it is totally realistic to have a goal to double your production in the next 12 months, okay? So if you did eight deals in the last 12, to do 16 in the next 12, definitely realistic, okay? If you're more in that range of say 10 to 20 transactions, okay, then somewhere between maybe a 50 to 75% increase, very realistic, okay? No reason that you can't add 50 to 75% in the next 12 months if you're in that window, okay? If you're maybe in the 20 to 35 deal a year range, so maybe you've been doing a couple deals a month pretty consistently, right? At that point, you're probably somewhere between, I don't know, I'd say 35 to 50%, right? In terms of an increase, there's no reason that you can't take a third of that and add it on in the next 12 months. That is very realistic, all right? Now, if you're already doing 35 or more transactions, a good rule of thumb year in and year out is to strive for at least a 25% increase, okay? So let's say you did 40 deals in the last 12 months, okay? 25% is 10, that means you aim for 50 deals. That's a minimum, okay, in the next 12 months. Now again, these are just guidelines, right? Some agents are a lot more driven. They're a lot more focused. They have a lot more resources that they have to put into building their production. So they might be able to increase that. But those are just some general things that would keep you within a range that we might consider realistic, okay? Now, let's talk about short-term goals, okay? Short-term goals, in my mind, would be something that you've set literally for the next 24 hours, or it might be over the next 30 days, okay? So I think it's important to be clear at the beginning of every day, what are my main outcomes for the next 24 hours, okay? Over this next 24 hours, what are the key things that I want to achieve? Those are very short-term goals, but they should be very specific. And they are totally derived from the bigger picture, right? The longer-term goal that you're aiming toward, right? So I'm going to recommend that you do a process that I call kind of like a smart day or a think time to begin your day, a morning routine, a morning ritual, okay, where you decide 
what are my outcomes? What are my main objectives for this next 24 hours? And then I feel like it's important to have a one month business plan, right? So at the beginning of every month, you wanna establish new goals for this 30 day period. It can be production goals, meaning how many deals do you wanna to put together? It might be appointment goals. It might be a specific system of your business that you wanna really focus on and improve in the next 30 days, okay? So those are short term goals. Now, longer term goals. Longer term goals are typically anywhere from quarterly to annual goals. So now we're zooming out a little bit, right? You understand that zoom in, zoom out concept. So we might take for an entire 90 day period and say, hey, this is what I need to achieve in my business. This is the goal for my organization over this next 90 days. And again, be clear, be specific, think them through, define exactly what you want things to look like at the end of that 90 day period or over this next 12 months, okay? So again, a 12 month vision for your business, for your income, for the size of your organization. Those are all examples of longer term goals, but it's simply based on the time frame, right? That's all it is that separates short term from long term goals. Okay. Now I also mentioned one other type of goal, which is more of a, a, a company level or organizational level goal. And there's a lot of different metrics. There's a lot of different targets, right? That you would use to set up a company wide or an organizational goal. So one example might be market share, okay? You might set a goal for what percentage of market share do you wanna have over the next 12 months, the next 24 months, okay? Based on the number of units that your company sells compared to the total. You might have a recruiting and retention goal, okay? That you set for yourself, which is simply, how big do you want your organization to get? What is your goal in terms of how many new people do you wanna bring on, new team members, new licensees to your agency? And then retaining them, Watch, it doesn't do any good to re recruit people in if you're losing them out the back door just as fast, gang. So you gotta have a retention goal. And there's certain things that would be built into that to make sure that they wanna stay. Creating a dynamic culture, having great training available, awesome systems that they can tap into and utilize to expand their business and leverage their time. So these are all examples of things that you can build into your recruiting goal and your retention goal right? Because we want to maintain those people in our organization that we bring in, okay? And of course, there's production goals, right? Obviously, on a company level, uh, what is the volume level you want to hit? What's the number of transactions you want to hit, etc. okay? So a lot of these concepts, I'm sure you've heard before, but, but here's the thing, gang. Um, we'll tell you, what, before we jump into that, let's talk about one other concept, okay? And that is tracking. As I said earlier, it doesn't do any good to set a goal if you aren't paying attention along the way to whether you're actually achieving it or not. And I think that's something that for a lot of agents, a lot of organizations, they simply don't want to take the time to do. So we're gonna talk about that. All right, so tracking your goals, tracking your numbers, tracking your metrics, gang, this is probably one of the areas that I feel like it's, I don't wanna say it's most overlooked, but it's right up there at the top, okay? A lot of people set goals, but then they have no idea of where they stand in relation to those goals. Now, for my coaching clients, the people that I use or work with, rather, they get to use a numbers analyzer. And if you're gonna go back and read the text version of this training, there's gonna be a link for you to download the actual numbers analyzer that I use and a training, or excuse me, a setup video, right? To go ahead and set that up for you. So you're gonna be able to access those two resources through some links right in the text version of this training. So that's super exciting for you. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me, okay? But here's one of the things you need to understand about tracking your numbers, tracking your metrics, measuring your goals. The numbers of your business, now listen, write this down. The numbers of your business are like a mirror, okay? Now let's be honest. There are a lot of times when, especially you get up early in the morning, man, you don't wanna look in the mirror. You don't wanna see the reality of what you look like at that particular moment, right? I know there are times when I feel that way, but you know what? Sometimes I find there's a lot of agents, there's a lot of own business owners. They don't wanna look at their numbers. They don't wanna see the truth or the reality of where they're at. But you know what? True business owners know their numbers. True business owners understand their numbers and they know what their numbers are telling them. Because here's, here's the thing, your metrics, your numbers are, will always tell a story but they will never lie, okay? They're always gonna tell you a story, but they are not gonna to lie to you. 
Your job is to know what to track and then what those metrics are actually telling you about the health of your business, about the direction that you're moving in, in terms of going towards your goal or not going towards your goal, okay? So you need to learn how to interpret what these things are telling you in your business. So I'm gonna give you nine metrics, okay? And again, I'm sure you've probably heard of these before, but the question is, how closely are you actually tracking these in your business? Okay, so these are basically for an individual agent, possibly a team leader, okay? So again, there's nine different things. Number one, how many days are you actually showing up to do work? Okay, how many days are you actually showing up to do work? I have a lot of my agents over the years that I'll look at their numbers in that numbers analyzer that I referred to, and I'll see that, man, they are, they are spot on with their ratios, man. If they go on 10 listing appointments, they're taking seven to eight of them every single time. Right. If if they are taking a certain number of listings, man, they're selling 98 to 100 percent of those listings. Uh, it, it, you know, when they're showing up to prospect, they're hitting those numbers. But here's the problem. They're inconsistent. Right. They're not showing up uh, often enough to apply that high level of skill and performance. So guess what? Their production looks like the bad EKG. It's up and down. Right. So you need to track how many days are you actually showing up in the course of a 90 day period, the course of a year, okay? So the second thing you wanna track is how many hours are you actually investing into business building activity? And let's just talk for a moment about just lead generation, right, prospecting, okay? You need to know how many hours a day are you averaging looking for new business, looking for new buyers and sellers and investors for your business, okay? Is it an hour a day? Is it three hours a day? Okay, that's up to you to track that, but you need to know those numbers, all right? Okay, the next metric is the number of actual conversations that you're having. And I'm gonna have you put a star next to this one, okay? And there's one other one that I'm gonna have you put a star next to, all right? But this one is a critical variable. When it comes to goal setting, right? When it comes to this whole conversation that we're having today about uh, setting a goal and then achieving it, listen, if you're in this business, this real estate business, you need to understand one thing. You are in a communication business. That's really what we do. Our business is a communication business. It's a sales-based business, but it's about communication. It's about engaging people. It's about creating relationships and having conversations to identify those people who have a need for what you do, which is to bring buyers, sellers, and investors together. Okay? So you got to measure that. You need to know how many new people a day are you actually speaking to huge metric, okay, to track towards your goals. The next one is the number of new leads you're actually adding on, a, say, a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, okay? Now, this can get into semantics and definitions. What is a lead, right? Uh, you know, if I get somebody that hits my portal from my website, or they come through to my CRM from Zillow or some other source, is that a lead? Well, it may or may not be a lead until you've actually spoken to them, engaged them, qualified them to find out do they meet certain standards that you've set for your business? Okay. But once you know what you're looking for, once you've defined your ideal customer and you are, have a system to qualify people that you have conversations with, then you can say, all right, well, I'm adding three good leads a week or 10 great leads a week to my pipeline. But you need to measure that. Okay. You need to track that. The next one is appointment set qualified appointment set with both buyers, sellers, or potentially investors, okay? So how many appointments are you setting as a result of all these conversations you're having? How many people are you getting to actually agree to meet with you, hear you out, and decide if they're gonna do business with you, okay? Then how many appointments are you attending, okay? Because I'm sure this has happened for a lot of you. You set an appointment, but then guess what? People don't show up, people cancel on you, right? So what percentage of the time that you set an appointment do you actually get to go and meet with that person? Okay, so that's an important metric. Appointments attended. And then here's the other one that I'm going to have you star. Contract sign, man. There is no better measuring stick other than possibly the conversation number. No better measuring stick than contract sign. This is the moment the rubber meets the road, gang. This is the moment you take one step closer to your goal because you've acquired someone who has signed an agreement to do business with you. That's exciting, man. You can start stacking those up. You can start to see how getting more and more and more of those is going to bring you to your goal even faster.
okay? And then the last couple of metrics are how many transactions are you closing and how much money are you earning, okay? I mean, hey, <laughs> most important metric might be arguably the, number, the, the, the income goal, the revenue goal, right? How much revenue are you generating on a monthly, quarterly, or yearly basis, right? We measure that in GCI, but, you know, an even deeper way to look at that from a cash flow management perspective is your profit, okay? Profitability. All right, but those are the nine metrics, okay? Let's go through them again real quickly. Number of days you actually work, the number of hours you work when you show up, the number of um, conversations that you have, the number of new leads that you add to your pipeline, number of appointments you set, number of appointments you attend, the uh, contract signed, which is a huge one, and finally, how many deals are you closing and how much money are you making, okay? So having said all of that, where do the goals play into the big picture of the roadmap, right? The roadmap, which is, you know, basically that foundation or it's certainly a part of the foundation of your business, okay? In fact, your business is, the foundation is really made up of three elements, three key elements. One of them is what we've been spending the majority of our time talking about, the goal, the vision. That's another word, okay? So as I said to you earlier, not only do you have to have a, v a vision and a goal, you need to be clear. You need to be so clear about what it is you're trying to accomplish. What is the ultimate outcome? What's the measuring stick for yourself and for your business? Okay. And the, the, the taking the time to be clear about that is, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of the planning process, right? When agents talk about making a business plan, making a roadmap. Okay, you can say what you want to accomplish, but unless you know why, you're probably not going to accomplish it. Okay, unless you have a meaningful goal and a reason to achieve that meaningful goal, there's a really good chance for most of us that we're not going to do what it takes to follow through. Okay, so the what is the goal, but the why, the why of the what, as I call it, that's critical. You need to spend the time figuring that out. What is driving you? What is motivating you? What is exciting you to take these steps forward? Okay, so goals or vision. That's ingredient number one of the three of your foundation. The second ingredient is the plan itself. Okay, the plan itself or the roadmap. Okay, and what you might say, this is the how of the what. Okay, so you say what you want to accomplish, but how are we going to do that? That's what the plan is for. That's what the roadmap is for. The business plan or the roadmap outlines the specific systems that need to get built or that need to get improved to drive in opportunities, okay? So it goes deep into system building. It goes deep into actionable items. Your business plan, your roadmap needs to be a series of steps that you and your team members or whatever are committed to taking over the next week, the next month, the next quarter, the next year, the next five years, okay? So you can have a five-year plan, right? And it's got to be very specific in terms of action steps. Now, the third element is the schedule. That is your time management, or maybe better put, it's your attention management. Where's your attention going throughout the course of a day, throughout the course of the week or a month? Where are you spending your time? Where are you putting your focus? And I'm telling you right now, this is the when of the what, Okay, so let's go back to the, you know, we've said what we want to accomplish. Well, we built the plan. We've created these action steps. When are you actually going to do them? Like when specifically in your calendar are you going to make the calls that you need to make? Or, you know, spend the time writing the handwritten notes or organizing the client events or building your social media platform or whatever it is that your plan says that you're supposed to do. You need to time block those things. Okay, so your schedule, your calendar is to your business plan the same way an addendum is to a contract. It's, an, it's a part of it. It becomes associated with that. That addendum that you write gets, it becomes a part of the agreement, part of the contract. Well, guess what? Your schedule and your calendar needs to be an integral part of the business plan. Again, it's the when of the what, okay? So those are your three, three elements, your three ingredients, if you wanna call them, to your foundation. It's the vision of the goal, it's the plan or the roadmap, whatever you want to call it. And it's your schedule. It's your time management and your attention management. Okay. And just remember, goals without plans are just dreams. That's all they are, right? Do you want to be a dreamer 
or do you want to be a doer and an accomplisher? Then you need to create a plan and you need to hold yourself to certain blocks of time throughout the day, throughout the week, when you take action on the items that are in your business plan. Okay? So there you have it, gang. Goals. Very, very exciting concept. I'm telling you, man. Uh, Again, as I said before, a lot of people don't have an issue achieving their goals. They just have a problem creating their goals. So I hope as a result of this training that you have a much clearer idea of what goals are, how to go about setting them, right? The different types of goals that we need to have, because at any given moment, we need to make sure our goals are realistic, but we got to have short-term goals, long-term goals, and potentially larger scale organization or company level goals, okay? We need to track them. We need to pay attention to are we on track or not on track? Are we moving in the direction of our goals and dreams or are we moving away from them? Right? It's been said that you may have a desperate desire to see the sunrise, but you spend the entire day sprinting west. Now think about that. If your goal is to see the sunrise, you better be going east. But for a lot of agents, they're busy. Man, they're in motion all the time. They're constantly doing things and they feel like they've had busy days, but they're going in the wrong direction. Right? So having a goal by itself is fine as long as you have a plan and a strategy and a roadmap to get you there. And at the end of the day, you got to have the time blocks in place to make sure that the goals have the, the, the seed bed to blossom in. That's really what we're talking about. Your time that you've invested into doing those things. So listen, I hope you've taken a lot of things away from this. I would love to hear some feedback. Um, thank you to Real Estate Bees for giving me the opportunity to share this with you. And for all of you, get out there and make today count. I'm James Hotel.